Hello everyone. Today we'll explore how to use community visualization in Looker Studio. Let's start with the basics. Third-party visualizations are typically used when you need more functionality than Looker Studio provides with its default charts. Or if you want to enhance some of the existing charts with external visualizations. I want to note that while this has its advantages, as third-party visualizations can extend the functionality of your reports, there are also some drawbacks. For example, they can sometimes lag or freeze a bit when editing. Let's see how to add a third-party visualization. To access the Community Visualization section, click on this icon where you'll see Community Visualization and Components. Once there, you'll notice a note stating that these visualizations are built by third-party developers, meaning they aren't native visualizations. You'll be presented with several default visualizations, and you can also click Explore More to view the full list of available third-party visualizations. For each visualization, you can choose to Report an Issue, visit the developer site, to see who created it, check out Learn More, view the privacy policy, and review the terms of service. I highly recommend that before selecting any visualization, you familiarize yourself with what it offers. When you click Learn More, it will take you to additional information provided by the developers on how to use the visualization. In our case, we want to select Date Picker and check out About. Each visualization will differ, so you'll need to review each one based on your needs. Today, we'll try using two visualizations, Date Picker and Sunburst Chart. How can this be useful in real reports? By default, we can add a date selector in Looker Studio, which offers several options, but only in a single format. Now let's try to display it at the top of our report. Let's go to page two for our editing and try using the community visualization. We select it from our list and then we add it to our report. If we've previously added it, no permission will be required. If not, it will ask for permission. Done. It's added. We're immediately presented with a policy for configuring how we can set it up. It's important that for this visualization, which in this case works as a filter, you enable cross-filtering. Otherwise, if we try it without enabling this, nothing will change. By adding cross-filtering, we'll be able to adjust and filter our dates, and the changes will reflect here. For example, let's select only the year 2024 and see how it changes. We can see all our tables adjust to display data only for 2024. Similarly, we can quickly add only the year 2023. And again, our tables adjust to display data for 2023. We can also select individual months here. This visualization is quite helpful as it allows you to intuitively filter only the months you need making your report more interactive. Now let's consider an example with another visualization. For instance, we have a simple chart, such as a pie chart. If we view our pie chart in preview mode, it currently shows a breakdown by expenses category. However, we've also added the ability to break it down by items. So how can we view both a breakdown by category and by items in a single report? For this, another third-party visualization can be useful. For now, we'll temporarily remove this report and add our visualization. It's called the Sunburst Chart. We click on it, and here's an important note. Each visualization requires your agreement to allow your data to be used by the visualization. After this, we select the area we want to view, and then we proceed to Settings. Specifically for this visualization, 
there are various fields that we can adjust. For our task, we need to display categories and items. We select the categories, and they appear here, allowing us to see them immediately. We'll choose to display only expenses, for instance. And if we also add an item breakdown, it's much easier to see what the salary category consists of. It's divided into our items. We can then check what's included in the range category and in the marketing category. This visualization also allows us to navigate different levels and expand the chart as we need. In the settings for this specific chart, we can choose to display our values by showing the legend. This way, we can immediately see the chart's components. That's basically it. I've shown you examples of using two simple third-party visualizations. But I also recommend exploring the other options and reviewing information on additional visualizations that could assist you in your work. Give it a like if you enjoyed the video. If you still have any questions, ask them in the comments.